Sometimes you forget because you come here every day, but I know that when I started working here, you'd walk down the main drive and think, this is just a beautiful environment to work in. So I had a very big surprise one day when I was at work attending a briefing with my colleagues and Justine Clark came in to deliver the good news to me that I'd been selected um, as a nominee for Australia's Music Teacher of the Year ARIA Award. Yeah. <laughs> I would say for the past 20 odd years I have been a full-time artist or a part-time artist, part-time teacher. I've had I've been very fortunate to have exhibitions in China, in the US, in Great Britain, and here in Australia. So we have a minimum of 12 students that can book into a class, so we might have some really small classes just depending on the size of the group that's coming in. Um, the largest capacity that we probably teach to is when we're um, doing introductions with a large group of students and that can be up to 200 at a time. So that's more, I guess, of a presentation style than a directed teaching style. Um, so it can sort of be in that range. Generally it'll be a class sizes of about 30 students, 20 30 we work with students one on one in their be at their bedside, but we also run group learning classes every day. So we run a secondary group learning class um, in the mornings and for three hours. Uh, and those students who are well enough to leave their rooms and able to come down and be around other other kids come down to the group class, and we run a primary group uh, class in the same manner, and also a um, kinder, a registered kinder here. An average teaching day. Um, could start showing a group that's studying Indigenous um, history, show them that history through painting. They could, it could be studying the colonies, so it, it could be that. Then in the afternoon, um, I could be doing an intro to the collection here at the National Gallery, um, and then I could do a workshop that's based off of that teaching um, for a group, the same group, or a group of younger students. So some of the um, sessions are based on sort of two 20 minute blocks based around in, inside intentional teaching and outside play based teaching or we have some other days which are more of a longer structure so where we're tapping in and out with students throughout the day. Um, with BCE classes um, it's two sort of intensive 45 minute blocks so they're quite quite more in-depth classes. We also have some SDS groups as well, so we're trying to support all learners that come to the zoo, so we've got a few um, inclusive programs as well. Other things that my day would entail would be contacting the schools of students, talking to their uh, teachers back in their enrolled school, finding out their individual learning goals that would be most relevant for them for this admission, developing individual learning plans. I also attend uh, multidisciplinary meetings with the medical team because um, the, their engagement with school and their continued learning is beneficial to their overall uh, health and well-being as well. Um, we cater through kindergarten all the way up to year 12. So as a sessional teacher, it's usually three to four hours uh, a day. Um, again, it could be a mix of, of straight teaching, teaching different um, year levels or classes. Um, it could be workshops and teaching mixed together. So literally, you can have kinder for one hour block and then go to BCE biology focusing on reproduction. So. It's a very varied day, um, depending on the different bookings that we have at different times of the year. Um, so we are kept on our toes continuously. <laughs> um, after teaching finishes at two o'clock in the afternoon, that's when we often get the chance to do project work. Um, to do, could be project work like work experience, or it could be a youth at the zoo um, program, which focuses on young children getting involved more at the zoo in the school holidays. It could be um, coordinating our different programs. Mm -hmm. There's such a variety of different projects that we have, and so we often get that time in the afternoon to focus on some of those programs and development, um, and to meet as well, lots of meetings. Because it's not, not, um, it's not just an education department, it's a whole organisation, a whole yeah. zoo. So <laughs> we will often have to meet about really interesting things with different um, zookeepers, different, uh, we call them precinct managers who uh, lead up the different animal departments so we can have some really interesting things that we get to meet about in the afternoons about different zoo happenings. I think there are a lot of similarities and differences working here in the hospital versus working in a traditional school setting. 
Our teaching and learning here at the hospital is um, aligned to the Victorian curriculum, so we're working with kids on their learning goals, the same learning goals that they would have back in their normal school classroom. However, um, some of the differences um, uh, that we're working, we might deliver it in a different way. So engagement is very important here because our kids are facing an extremely difficult time. So we're looking at ways to make their learning um, engaging and creative and fun while we're making sure that we're helping them to progress on their learning goals in line with the Victorian curriculum. The advantages are I can directly relate what they're learning to an artwork. Instead of say seeing it on a screen or a video or in a book, I can take that student to them and we look at the texture, the colour, the composition, the mathemat the mathematics involved in creating the work or the philosophy of the painter of the painter um, uh, and and gear that towards the curriculum, which is a very different scenario than being in the classroom. Now, with that in mind, um, I, I miss that the didactics that happen when you're in a school situation. You know, you get to see that child at recess or at PE and be able to relate to that PE teacher and compare notes about the, the student's attitude and how they're growing as a person and what teaching we need to do to foster them to be a much better student. So that dynamics, I think, is different. It, we are very fortunate that we do get um, a lot of particularly in-house training. Um, we've got a great support team that each term we're doing some sort of professional development, whether it's looking at design thinking, mm -hmm. whether it's looking at just um, conservation um, ups inquiry, all those different kinds of skills. M many of the workshops that we have here on the collection um, can be applied to um, my VAT um, um, certification. We work as a team and we'll have regular train the trainer sessions and professional learning uh, conversations between the team where each uh, teacher is bringing their particular specialisation and skills and is able to help upskill the rest of the team but then we also attend a lot of um, in-house in PD and external PD. To increase our professional learning, we also access things like the VIT, mm -hmm. um, e-newsletter, um, and um, you know, there's um, lots of uh, um, providers like Cool Australia mm -hmm. um, that provide some wonderful lesson plans and um, also things like the conversation. Um, uh, Acer has a team, uh, a team yeah, a teaching magazine, yeah. so things like that. Uh, I think one, uh, there's many benefits to working in an environment like this. Uh, I think it's a real privilege to work with students and with families when they're at this particularly difficult time of their lives. I find that um, extremely rewarding and being able to build that one-on-one -on -one relationship with kids and help them um, on their learning journey. Uh, I think also uh, professionally I find that working here is extremely beneficial because it upskills me in my teaching right across the curriculum uh, and and not just in one year level because I work with kids from early early primary to upper primary to secondary I'm having to be continually learning about the curriculum and the best teaching practices across the board. Because the dynamics of a group are different every every it can be the same school, but the attitude of the kids are, are very different. I think it's reading that, that, that classroom and, or that class of students and then seeing what would be the best approach to that. Is it more of a lecture style for some of them or is it more, look friends, this is what we need to do. <laughs> so I think that, that is what feeds me and keeps me on my toes and actually sitting down for the first time today. <laughs> yeah, so that's what keeps me pretty excited about work. I think we're all here because we love our jobs, we love this setting, we love having this opportunity and we're really passionate. Um, we're passionate about teaching children, we're passionate about education, so having the chance to um, blend those two passions together mm. is a really special thing. So that's um, in a bit of a nutshell why I love my job so very, very much.